that Steve Harvey karma just ain't letting up. What karma, you ask? Well, according to his ex-wife, Mary Shackelford, the law of don't start no ish, won't be no ish has come to collect and she's gonna make sure she's the one passing around the collection plate. Uncle Steve, as we know, is the living embodiment of a man with a plan. Whether it's creating a successful business, hosting almost everything, or keeping our vibrations high with his witty comedic skills, he's gonna keep him a job. However, according to Mary, ain't nothing funny when you owe millions in emotional distress and heartache. Mary Harvey not only wants justice, but her son back, who she claims Steve not only kidnapped out of spite, but abused mercilessly. So just how credible are Mary's claims? Is Steve Harvey a wolf in sheep's clothing? Or is all of this just another case of the bitter ex? In a wild turn of events, Steve Harvey's past is spinning the block to hopefully finish what it had started. Steve and that bald head of his can't hide from his shenanigans pre-Kings of Comedy Steve, pre-Steve with the million gigs, and pre-Married to Marjorie Steve. Whether you know him as Family Feud's greatest host, the host of The Steve Harvey Show, or his sitcom of the same name, Steve Harvey has made quite the impression in the entertainment world, giving us generations worth of non-stop laughter and nostalgic feels. The Emmy award-winning superstar is great at doing what he does. On top of being a devoted, loving father to seven, Steve serves as an inspiration to many. His comforting motivational speeches, often being promoted and ingested by those seeking his advice, tuned in to support his endeavors. But despite him pushing you hesitant folks to quit shoving your face with excuses, Using himself as a prime example, Mary Shackelford Harvey knows another side of Steve that most of y'all have no clue about. Before Marjorie Harvey took a seat on the throne next to her husband, officially powering the Harvey empire back in 2007, he was married to a woman named Mary Shackelford, also known as the mother of Steve's son, Wenton Harvey. Ever since Steve placed a diamond on another woman's ring finger, Mary has been on the prowl to discredit all of Steve's claims and expose him for the low-down, trifling, soul-sucking serial cheater that he truly is. But before she was out here slandering his famous name to anyone willing to listen, Mary was like many other women taking a man at his word. A ride or die. She may not have built him from the ground up, but his battery show wasn't included in the package when she took him out of the box. Sometime in 1989, a not-so-well-known Steve was lurking around his wife-to-be's workplace, where she'd been working at a cosmetic counter. As she wiped the remainder of her lunch from the corners of her lips, Mary, about to clock back in from a much-needed break, was alerted by her co-worker about a random man's whereabouts located and parked right at Mary's little work area. Hesitantly taking her position, Mary made herself known, and the unknown man did the same. Although his presence spoke louder than words, she kept it professional until dudes started probing her for her name, which she dismissively gave. Noticing her growing attitude, he took it upon himself to hold her no longer and somberly exited the store. She may have been a little rude, but for a decent reason. Mary, then in her 20s, had gotten out of a long-term relationship and marriage just three years prior and was not ready to go down that route anytime soon. If she was trying to get this man to leave her alone, she accomplished her goal. However, Miss Mary actually felt a bit guilty about her rude behavior. Deciding to go out and look for the man to apologize, she'd been looking every which way until she spotted him sitting coolly on the side of a water fountain. Are you looking for me? The man mouth. Dude had been looking at her, looking for him the entire time. Indeed she was. He finally got the chance to thoroughly introduce himself as Steve Harvey and even convinced her to give up the digit. Later that evening, Mary was still on the clock when the phone rang. Attempting to refrain from rolling her eyes to the back of her skull, she already knew it was the guy with the mustache calling to get on her last nerve. Yup, it was him all right, calling to ask Mary to meet up with him at a club. Given it was his birthday, she agreed and headed that way as soon as she clocked out. As soon as she walked in, Steve lured her over to a table and the two of them got situated before Steve hit her with a BRB and dashed off to God knows where. Sipping on her drink, Mary took note that it had been a comedy club he had invited her to and would soon find out Steve was the next act. Taken aback, Mary kiki with the rest of them, but to keep it a buck, she didn't find him all that hysterical. She was ready to go. She was tired and hungry, so he offered to take her to Denny's. She ordered a grand slam. He ordered nothing except a free cup of water, which she later find out that's all he could afford at the time. 
Even up till then, Mary still wasn't head over heels for Steve, but none of that mattered. He was going to make her like him by any means, even if that meant showing up to her job with a box full of over a hundred Hershey kisses with a shoe inside. Inside the shoe read a note that said something along the lines of, I'd walk a thousand miles for your kisses. That'll do it. And did. Steve won Mary over with that one and little by little, day by day, she began falling in love. During their relationship timeline, Steve's comedic career began to take flight and he was in demand like never before. Flying from this place to that one, he'd be given a key to Mary's apartment to use as a crash pad for whenever he needed a place to stay. As time went on, the relationship grew more serious. Steve, now a well-known comedian, was in such high demand that clubs and venues he'd been booked at couldn't even hold the number of people waiting outside to see him. The lines were wrapped. So Mary gave him the brilliant idea to open up his own club. Not only that, but she'd even invest into it. 250,000 to be exact. She even came up with the design and everything. Wedding bells were ringing any day now, but before Steve popped the big question, Mary had a few things to ask him. There isn't another woman, is there? To which Steve denied. Long and behold, not only was he not telling the truth, but the guy was actually married and had been this entire time, which would be three and a half years by this point. How'd she find out, you ask? Well, his own mama spilled the beans via telephone. Once word got out and Mary gave Steve a piece of her mind, he broke down right then and there, dropped to his knees, held her legs tightly, and pleaded with her to not kick him to the curb. And you know what? She didn't. Only after convincing her he'd been separated from his first wife, Marsha, and their divorce was to be finalized any day now. She knew about his twins, Brandy and Carly, but not a whole wife. Nevertheless, Sister Girl wasn't going anywhere, which she'd find out years down the road would be one of the biggest mistakes she'd ever made. Mary and Steve wedded in 1996, and their son, Wenton Harvey, would be conceived the following year. This makes Steve a father of four and Mary a mother of two, including her son from a previous marriage. They wouldn't make it past the five year mark before some mess occurred. Not on Mary's end, but on Steve. Steve was creeping, creeping. And the more famous he got, the worse it became. This was also during the time he landed his own sitcom, The Steve Harvey Show. So you already know the coins were coming in hot and the women. More specifically, a woman who goes by the name Terry Smith, who had written a nice little letter to Mary. We won't go into specifics here, but the note basically said, I'm your man's mistress, and Steve ain't the man you think he is. Mary didn't want to believe it at first, but the more she read, the more details stood out that no one would have known unless Steve himself told you directly. Before even finishing the letter, Mary was in full hysterics. She confronted him. He denied everything, but deep down, Mary knew he was full of it, and yet still, she stayed. Not too long after, in the year 2000, this Terry chick took it upon herself to write a tell-all book titled, Men Will Lie When the Truth Will Do, The King, His Queen, and His Other Woman. The book details Steve's nine-year affair with her, and people have speculated that the situation ship spawned a side baby no one knows about. Fast forward to 2005, Mary and Steve call it quits. Well, on Steve's end anyway, and Steve immediately begins dating Marjorie Bridges. Well, that was fast. And apparently Mary thought so too, since she'd accused Steve of sneaking around with Marjorie as well as other women during their 16 year relationship. Come to think of it, 2005 wasn't the first time Marjorie and Steve had come in contact or dated for that matter. The two actually met at a comedy club back in 1990. As Marjorie walked in fashionably late, Steve stopped his set abruptly, mesmerized by the pretty brown thing making herself known. Coming out of his trance, Steve supposedly told the audience, I don't know who that lady is, but I'ma marry her, to which he strived to do. They dated for a while, but decided to cut things off for the time being until he got his mind right and his money up. They went their separate ways and came around full circle in 2005 after Steve's bodyguard reminded him of old girl he met back at the comedy club a whole 15 years later after their initial introduction. Mind you, both Steve and Marjorie were very much married to their significant others at the time, but we'll give Marjorie the benefit of the doubt and say alleged. Ever since Mary and Steve's divorce, she's made it her goal to expose your favorite TV uncle. Mary wants justice and her son back. 
This was no smooth sailing divorce by any means. Mary's claims of child endangerment, torture, mental and physical abuse, above all else, landed them in a hefty tit-for-tat court and custody battle. Mary Lee Harvey was suing her ex-husband Steve Harvey for $60 million and wasn't letting up till she got every penny. Mary insists that Steve was vindictive, manipulative, and spiteful throughout their entire divorce. When Steve caught wind that she was trying to divorce him, he pulled a her on her, packed a shoulder bag, and jetted off to their shared New York apartment, where he allegedly had Marjorie waiting for him at the door. He got their housekeeper to pack up the rest of his belongings and forward it to his residence. Steve didn't even have the decency to show up to their divorce hearing. Mary was devastated, which is why she was suing Mr. Harvey with the teeth for intentional infliction of emotional distress, breach of contract, conspiracy against rights, torture, child abuse, and soul murder. According to Mary, she lost everything in the midst of it all, including her businesses, many which she shared with Steve, all of her cars, and even her home. She'd been evicted and the divorce settlement granted to her was never received. Being a man of power, connections, and lots of wealth, Steve was able to pay, bribe, and manipulate the courts, the attorneys involved, and paint Mary out to be the angry black woman and bitter baby mother. But supposedly that was far from the case. She was out to get what was owed to her. As they sat in court, Mary witnessed Steve blatantly lying under oath, twisting their realities, causing her to break down so much so she could barely answer questions asked by the judge and attorneys. Let Steve tell it, he got to where he is all on his own with no help from his ex-wife. Despite Mary pouring money into his businesses and investing in him while he was just a starter comedian, still trying to break through. At one point, Mary didn't even have enough money to hire an attorney, so she was left with no choice but to defend herself for hours, while Steve had his entire legal team and entourage there to back him up. After the judge dismissed Mary's case, Steve, along with his now wife Marjorie, who he married in 2007, sued Mary for defamation after a series of YouTube videos were released to Mary's YouTube channel, detailing events that went on during her and Steve's marriage. And we must say, some of these claims are downright chilling. One in particular being the accusations of child abuse by Steve toward their son, Winton who was just 10 years old when he came back from his dad's house, beaten and bloodied with a number of welts, bruises, and cuts all over his body. Apparently, Steve had beaten baby Winton like a runaway slave after his teacher called and notified him of Winton's lack of homework. Winton told his mom that Steve was embarrassed that he'd receive a phone call from his teacher. Police were alerted and took photos of the boy's injuries. The punishment was so severe that Winton told him he couldn't urinate for days, and Mary could still see the bruises from the paddleboard used as well as the imprints of a belt buckle on her son's back. Steve was investigated, but based on the information obtained, Winton wasn't at risk of any real danger and the investigation would soon be closed. Another time, Mary says Winton confessed to her that Steve once cocked his fist back and punched him dead in his chest, knocking the wind out of her son. And now here, she was forced to send Winton on a flight back to his father's after he'd won sole custody. As her now former assistant assisted a then 13-year-old Winton to his flight, he called his mama to assure he was okay. Flights between his mom's and his dad's had become the norm for Winton by this point. But this would be the final flight for Mary's to seize as he was set to live the rest of his life with his dad and Marjorie. Mary wanted nothing more than for her baby boy to remain in her custody and supposedly so did Winton, who'd break free from Steve's bodyguard after picking him up from the airport to call his mama and give her the rundown of his escape plan. Although amused, Mary convinced her son to go back to the bodyguard. After Steve caught wind of his ex going on a slanderous online world tour, he immediately nipped that in the bud by hitting her with a lawsuit to which the judge granted. Mary was to take down the videos on her account, although that didn't stop the vids from spreading like the Rona and refrain from making any more accusations against Steve while the case was pending. Steve, on the other hand, got the judge to lift a gag order, which would have prohibited him from speaking about the case publicly, only to defend his name from Mary's claim. Miss Mary couldn't just sit back and watch this man make her out to be a crazy, bitter ex, so she took to the internet streets to counter his claims. Unfortunately, this would lead her behind bars for the next 30 days. On contempt of court, 
leaking sealed information, and violating the rules. Given an interview whilst in the slammer, Mary insists that she's just a mother who wants access to her son. Oh, and about that $60 million lawsuit? She wants Broderick, Steve's real name, arrested expeditiously. I want him arrested for violating my civil rights. I want him charged with a constitutional rights violation, falsifying documents, perjury, contempt of court, embezzlement, extortion, and collusion. For what he's done to me, I want to see Steve Harvey behind bars. On top of Steve taking their son, stopping her bags via their joint businesses, evicting her from the crib, manipulating the courts, apparently all that heart-to-heart -heart transparency he's known to discuss on his talk and radio show is nothing but a bunch of baloney. You may recall Steve's rags to riches story about how he'd been homeless, living in his car until he got his big break. Well, supposedly it was all a lie. At least not how he made it seem. Unc always had somewhere to live. Being the youngest of his mother's kids, Steve was practically spoiled compared to the rest of his siblings, and Mama Harvey always made sure her son had a place to stay. Remember Steve saying he brought his parents a house? Lies you tell. Again, according to Mary, it was she who'd brought up the idea to pay off his parents' mortgage. Don't stop there, Mary. Tell us more. Our wish is her command. To add a little razzle-dazzle, this next one isn't Steve-related, but juicy nevertheless. Mary addressed a time when Cassie Davis, more famously known as Ella from Tyler Perry's House of Pain, came to her crying about her mama being evicted. How much you need? Mary asked with the quickness to which Cassie replied, 40K, even quicker. Mary gave her the funds, no questions asked, and yet when Mary was going through trouble in her life, Cassie was nowhere to be found. Being associated with Steve Harvey came with its pros and cons. Having folks yearning to be around you solely because of who your man is being one of them. Contrary to Mary stating she was left with nothing, court documents prove otherwise. She was given not one, but three homes after their split, a $40,000 monthly allowance up until 2009, and a payout of $1.5 million. Perhaps this ain't enough for Mary, who's still out here telling her story till this day. A whole 18 years after their divorce. Sister Girl is hurt all these years later and says she refuses to be silenced. She hasn't seen her son went in years, alleging that Steve completely turned him against her while he's over his daddy's mansion kissing his stepmom Marjorie in photo ops and Rocky matching PJs on Christmas cards. It's evident Mary has been left completely heartbroken over this entire ordeal. Devastated Eve. Parts of her identity and overall being was wrapped up in being a mother to her son and to have him taken away from her has left her traumatized. From what we can tell, Winton is living his best life over at Steve's, taking extravagant vacations with his siblings and not thinking too much about his biological mama. But it's hard for Mama Mary to put all of this behind her when she's reminded of Steve and his mess on the daily. I'm just a mother who wants to have access to my son without interference. Woo! Talk about a family feud. Do you believe Mary's claims? Or think this is just another case of a scorned baby mama? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments and stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.